Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Molesky. This is my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about a really played out subject. I think, maybe that's just my sphere, like what I'm into. But I think it's pretty played out, and that is boundaries. Okay, so this is what happened. Three days ago, I gave my stepdaughter 10 spelling words with definitions. And I said, if on Saturday at 1 o'clock you get 100%, we will immediately go to the swimming pool. We will immediately get to have a swim day. She was super pumped, but she didn't really do her end of the bargain. She studied a little bit, but in all of her leisure time, she just read her leisure books or went and played by the pond or whatever. And that's totally fine because she knew that in order to get something, she had to get a hundred percent. And she chose to not do that. Did she have regret? She did, <laughs> but she knew. And it got me thinking about, you couldn't pay me to relive my twenties or my childhood. No, no, I'm afraid of dying, but I'm pretty much afraid of going back to my childhood or my twenties again. I wouldn't want to do it, but it's an interesting thing when you're a child you know all the rules. There are clear boundaries, if we're lucky. I guess I should caveat that with if we're lucky. We know that if we tell a lie, what, some of you were spanked, right? Some of you uh, lost out on going to a camping trip or couldn't go to a friend's house or whatever. There was consequences. And the point, I think, of having a good childhood is to prepare you to create your own punishments, your own set of consequences without the assistance of parents to basically create your own boundary. But if you look around, people really don't, they're not very good at it, right? And that fits into the boundaries of relationships in my opinion. Okay, let me get my train of thought here. What are, what are the few things in your life right now that you know if you don't, if you don't do them, you will have a negative consequence? I was thinking school, you have to study and then you get to graduate. You have to show up to work or you get fired. Let's just press a little pause button on this. I was shopping at a retail store a couple years ago and I heard the, the, an employee on the phone saying, oh no, again, really? You can't find anyone who will drive you. Okay, all right, yep, well then I'll see you tomorrow. I was like, holy shit, again? You can't, again, you can't come in again? Can't find a ride. The boundary of that, of that retail store in a million restaurants and a million places in the world right now is you can do just about anything as an employee and still show up for your job the next day and no one's going to fire you because everyone in the country needs help right now. Everyone's looking for someone to work. And because of that, you know, buyer's market, seller's market, because it's a buyer's market, they can be the worst employee ever. So we have a whole down spiral of service, service, I would say. But that is what's going on with, with boundaries in that. But I'll go back and say, okay, if you don't show up for work, you could lose your job. School, God can put boundaries on you, depending upon how much you believe. But I also think that that is one of the ways that we self-impose boundaries on ourselves, punishments and consequences. It's how we set up, it's one of the ways we set up a life that we can live with pride. But when it comes to relationships, I don't see a lot of people having boundaries or enforcing them. Now, inevitably, there's going to be someone in the comment section or someone watching this who's like, Is it, it's not that hard. It's just not that hard. Treat someone with respect, they think, right? But we all have, we all really have a different idea and version of respect. 
my version of I that's why there's not a lot of people built for me like I really like it when people are mean to me but in a jokey way like I thrive on it I don't feel really loved until someone talks shit to me with a laugh but a lot of you are like oh that sounds really weird this this youtuber has problems maybe so but I really like it. It makes me feel loved when, when there's some jabs, right? The boundaries that everyone has is clearly, oh, I hate when people say clearly. Oh no, I'm that person. The boundaries that people have, it seems, are murky for everyone. Do you know someone whose spouse cheated on them and they're still together? I do. I also know of someone who left someone because they got unattractive and not like morbidly obese or just had some horrible car accident, just got older. So for some people, the boundary, let's talk about for your wife. For some people, the boundary is if you get too old and I don't like to look at it anymore, I'm going to divorce you. For other people, it's you don't have to have a job, you don't have to be nice to me, and you don't have to be faithful, and I'll stay. And that's one of the main reasons why, that is one of the main reasons why women leave, no, why, uh, why you're not having sex. And I did a whole video about that, but women and men, Women don't like it when you don't respect, when you don't put up boundaries and you don't respect them. But anyway, that's, that's a different video and I'm already coming up on seven minutes here. I just wanted to ask you if you've ever sat down with yourself and established a clear set of boundaries. Do you know the consequences that your loved one will face for all the possible infractions that they could? If you don't know, are you curious? If you don't know, if you were to start the list right now, do you think people would be outside of the boundaries that you think you would have put in place if you would have done that five years ago? So if you would have put a list of boundaries five years ago, has your spouse already toppled over and jumped the fence on all of them or most of them? And then what are you going to do? Fire people, go to hell not graduate, those are the, the more firm positions or consequences, but what about you? What are you going to do about your cheating wife? What about the wife that just sits on the couch all day and eats and treats you poorly? Some, this can't go on forever. Listen, this can't go on forever. You have to stop this. Either you have to leave the relationship and I don't want to be, you know, like I don't want to be the person whose hyperlink takes you to hell. Okay. But I don't know if we are meant to be in a relationship that is pitiful at the bottom of a pit. Is your relationship putting you in a pit? How can you create a ladder to get out of it? I think it has to do with courage. It takes so much courage to know what's wrong and to say it out loud for fear of change, I guess, of being left alone. I have so many I've read so many comments and gotten so many emails from men who talk about how much they do for their wife and how nasty their wife is. And I know maybe you're listening right now, someone who, who relates to this. And she sits at home all day and she is mean to you and she doesn't work and you cook dinner too. So the fear is if I say, hey, Jennifer, I don't really like how you're acting, will you change that? They don't even want to have that conversation because Jennifer might be like, no, are you kidding me? 
And then, and then what? And then what? Then you have to recoil back into yourself and take a beating still for the next 10 years. Unless you say, look, this is my boundary. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And you can be mad at me and you can take half my stuff and blah, 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 because that's what a lot of you complain about, right? But I'm telling you, if you're a woman, if you are a man who is letting your woman sit on a couch and disrespect you, you're probably not wealthy. You're, you're just probably not wealthy. You don't have the character type to bring yourself to wealth because it takes boundary and strictness, right? This is the kind of video that I keep on my phone and never ever put out. So we'll see what you guys think of it because this is genuinely a rant. You think I rant on those four minute ones? You kidding me, bro? All right, so let me know what you think. Well, are you stuck in a pit? Or have you, have you, were you in a pit in a relationship and you figured out how to never, see, cause this is what happens. When you finally have the courage to say to your husband, listen, this can't happen anymore. Wife, this can't happen anymore. What happens or what can happen is the spouse will fill your pit with water. So you are petrified of drowning. And that's, that's what you are focused on and you're swimming and you're scared for a couple weeks, a couple months, a couple years until you realize that, oh, I have, I have, there's so much shit that they've piled on me that now I'm flush with the earth and now I can go and climb out into the world and begin again. How will I not get myself into another pit? And I think a lot of the, a lot of the, Thank goodness a lot of you don't know what the red pill community is, but I think a lot of the red pill community is men who have been in a pit and not been poured water on, but have been spit on and they've sw swam and spit and now they're level and now they're just absolutely petrified of having that happen again. So they go way, the pendulum swings way on the other side and they're not, they don't have healthy boundaries. They're just psychopaths who have no idea how to be the overused word of alpha. And anytime it rains, they think it's because the spouse, oh my God, this is what's happening. I'm talking too much. And I shouldn't say God. I owe a dollar to my stepdaughter. Okay, what do you think? Everyone have a good day. Goodbye.